Coach, Coach Steve Smith. Coach, uh, another great win over Welburn. Uh, great atmosphere this past Friday night. Tough place to play on the hill there in Welburn. And uh, opportunity for our guys to go in there and prove themselves. And I thought we played really well. Got out to a big lead in the first half. Was able to maintain it through the second half and pick up a big regional win against a really, really good opponent. Uh, what kind of confidence does that give you going forward? Um, you know, a tough place to play. Uh, the conditions were, were a little bit wet, and we had a little bit of a, de a delay coming out of halftime. Um, I thought we played really, really, really well. Um, does that give you give your players more confidence moving forward the rest of the season? Well, I got to hope that, that we can use this as a building block, that we can uh, continue to go forward, not be content with where we're at right now. But it was our best performance of the season, and you know you want to be playing your best ball toward the end of the year. We got Westbrook Christian on the road, another team that's fighting for their playoff life this upcoming week. Uh, they do a lot of things different than what we've been seeing in the last few weeks. Uh, looking for a lot of four and five wide and throwing the ball all over the field and all kind of trick gadget plays. Um, we got we to gotta go out and prepare again this week though and go give another great effort on the road against another good region opponent. Coach, this week's player of the week is actually the entire defense of the Piedmont Bulldogs. Uh, uh, if you haven't seen Welburn play, uh, they have weapons all over the field. They can uh, can, can do a lot of misdirection and kind of get you uh, out of position with some athletes with speed. Right. And I thought our defense did fantastic. Coach. Defense was lights out. Uh, you know, props to Coach Blanchard and all of our guys on the defensive side and our our defensive per uh, personnel for going out and executing the game plan to a T. Uh, our game plan this past week, we we had a lot of guys that were, were key in one person, and uh, those guys did a wonderful job of, of playing their keys and. And, and the plays that Welburn ran, uh, a lot of times our, our guys kind of knew what was coming uh, before they actually ran it. And that's just a testimony to, to great preparation on that defensive side of the ball and, and the players going out and executing it uh, to perfection. Uh, Coach, Drake Thompson is uh, your main horse, so to speak, as far as carrying the load for your, your offense, as far as carrying the ball. Uh, but there was several moments where uh, in the second half, uh, he actually w w went down for a little while with a little hampered injury that had been kind of hampering him. Um, and we had some young guys step in, like Lee Stanley, and a couple of guys who uh, kind of helped bear the load in the second half and, and, and maintain the, the you know the game for the offense. Well, you know, Drake's been banged up a little bit the last few weeks. Uh, he kind of re-aggravated an old injury. Uh, Drake's very tough. He's going to play if there's any way possible. And, we got him out of there. We had a two touchdown lead, I think, at the time when he came out and scored on the next play, which got our three touchdown advantage back, which is where we're at at uh, halftime. Uh, Lee Stanley's done a wonderful job coming around, progressing nice as a freshman. He's actually our second leading rusher on the year. Uh, we got a lot of confidence in him, and as each week passes and he gets a little bit more experience, he's getting better and better. And I think he's going to be a significant contributor for us before the year's over. Uh, Coach, CJ Savage, you know, uh, He's one of those players that you, you almost know that, that he's going to have a, a breakout play each game. Is it something where you feel like he has to, to make a play to kind of have a breakout game, or does he, have, does he have to get going, or what do you feel like you have to do to get CJ in the game with Bob? Well, a lot of people, you know, a lot of teams have started playing, you know, a guy over the top against CJ, putting one up on him close and one back deep because of his speed. Uh, it's our job as coaches to find ways to get the ball in his hands. Uh, he's one of the best playmakers on the team, and so, you know, we have to be creative sometimes. But we got him involved the other night, I think, on speed sweep. We're handed it to him, and he went 57 yards for a touchdown. Uh, because of the speed factor, he gets a lot of underneath routes, and he's a really good uh, runner after the catch. And that's what happened on the second touchdown the other night. He just caught a simple hitch route or hook route, if you want to call it that, about a seven or eight yard throw, and then turned it into a 60 yard touchdown. And it's obviously good to have people like that on your team. Uh, people that are really good out in space that can make somebody miss and make a big play out of a short pass. And you know, CJ's one of those guys that we count on to make plays for us, and uh, he's come through for us time and time again this year. Now let's check out some highlights from this past week's game versus Welburn. Okay, we got a segment in right there.
two, one. Welcome back to the Piedmont Football Show. I'm your host, Roger Goodwater. It's our head coach, Coach Steve Smith. Coach, uh, another big region matchup with Westbrook Christian on the road. Westbrook Christian team that's playing the battle for that fourth playoff spot in the region. Uh, they're, they're right now looking at some combination of them, Weaver or Pleasant Valley, securing that fourth spot. Uh, team will be very well coached, very well prepared. Coach Osborne is one of the brightest offensive minds that, that we'll play all year long. I've known him for about 20 years. And He's always done a good job having good quarterbacks. They lost their quarterback first region game of the year against Ohashi. They moved another guy there, and, and he's done a wonderful job for them. So we know we're going to get a big test on the road from a team that's going to be ready to play. Uh, coaches, as we move forward, we do have a couple of teams battling for the fourth spot. Uh, you know you're going to get everybody's best shot. That, does that play into how you prepare for teams? Or do you, is your kids, are, are they aware of this? And well, they are aware, but you know it, it can't, it can't factor in on how we prepare. We've got to prepare for every opponent as if it's the best opponent we're going to play. You know, I always tell the kids the next game's the biggest game because it's the next game. You can't overlook anybody. We are going to get Westbrook's best effort. When we come back next week, we'll play Weaver and we'll get Weaver's best effort. Uh, but you, you got to go out as a, as a mature football team. you got to go out and prepare for everyone's best effort. But you got to also make sure that you're correcting the mistakes that you've made and, and expanding on things that you're doing well. Coach, is it is it tough going from a, from a, a mainly a running team to a passing team to a spread team to a throwing team? Is it is that is it hard each week to get to go back and forth? You know, I don't really think so. I mean, I think our kids will, will respond well. Uh, we do a great job from a from our coaches' standpoint of, of trying to simplify as many things. We don't go over everything that an opponent can do. We try to focus on what they do best. And I think we keep it pretty simple for our kids. So I expect our guys to pick up on the game plan and do a good job of going out and executing it. And we, we may get down there and they may show something they've not shown all year. It might take us a little time to adjust to that. But uh, if, they, if they're pretty much true to form on what we've seen on film, then we'll have them ready to play. And it'll just be a matter of them if the kids going out there and being confident and relaxed and, and making the plays. And Coach, um, I want to do something a little bit different. I want to talk about your, about your coaching staff. Um, you know, as, as hard as, as you and your staff works and all the tireless hours that you spend, um, a great group of guys that, that, I, that I think that everybody would, would be proud for their kids to play for. So if you would just highlight your staff and just talk a little bit about them real quick. Well, I'm, I will agree with you on that. I've got a great group of guys that help me. You know, a lot of times the head coach gets way really too much credit when things are going well at the program. Uh, but these guys are wonderful. They, they spend just as much time here as I do. Uh, they spend a lot of time away from their families, their own kids, to be able to help other people's kids. And a lot of times I think that gets overlooked because people just simply look at results on Friday. And we've been pretty successful on Fridays, and I think a lot of it has to do with the fact of their dedication and their commitment. But, you know, I think a lot of people just step back and realize how much they give up from their own families to be able to try to mentor and, and guide young men in the right direction. Uh, Coach Blanchard has been with here with me the whole time. We've been together nine years, and he's, in my opinion, he's the best defensive coordinator around. He does an awesome job of preparing each week, and he's very detailed. Uh, he, he gets things in a, in a manner and a perspective that can relate to our kids and can get it across to them. Our defense is always prepared. Uh, helping on that side of the ball with him, I'm going to highlight the defensive side first because of the, the great performance they had this past week against Welber. But new coach to our staff, Coach Brian Stovall, uh, Coach Stubball works with the defensive ends, and he's done a wonderful job coming in and bringing some enthusiasm and some excitement. Uh, he's always eager to, to stick around and learn extra, and, and he's picked up very quickly on what we try to do. Coach Walker, Patrick Walker, is in his uh, fourth year now on the staff, and he uh, works with our nose guards on the defensive side. Coach Walker is one of my best friends in the world. Uh, I've got a lot of confidence in him, a lot of trust in him and, and his ability. He does a great job relating to our kids and, and, and can get the point across to them really well. Uh, Coach Mark Mitchell works with our outside linebackers. Coach Mitchell's in his third year on staff, another guy that worked with me when I was at Cedar Bluff. Uh, you won't find a guy that's any more dedicated, hardworking than he is. And, and he's a great football coach, very knowledgeable of what's going on. And uh, he's been able to come in and, and bring some, some experience from his days as a defensive coordinator. So having a second guy on that side of the ball who's had coordinator experience 
been able to bounce some ideas back and forth between him and Coach Blanchard, but uh, been a valuable addition for us. Uh, Coach Matt Glover, Pete Mott native, is in his ninth year, been here with him the entire time also. Uh, I, I tell everybody that in, in Matt Glover and, and Oscar Bonds and in Brian Stovall, uh, we've got three guys that are right there in that 30 to 33 year old range that you know a lot of people would would love to just have one person like that on their staff that was young and energetic. We've got three guys that are that way. They love kids and they're very passionate about what they do. Uh, Matt Glover though, uh, I can't say enough good things about him. He, he coaches our inside backers. Last year he had an All-State performer, and a, an honorable mention All-State performer. Uh, does a great job of getting those guys ready to play and, and, and is just a tremendous asset to this program. Uh, Oscar Bonds, who I just mentioned there, he helps out with Coach Blanchard in the secondary. And uh, Coach Bonds has been here, been part of the program the entire time I've been here, first on the junior high level, and then he's come up and helped us on the varsity for the last few years. But uh, Coach Bonds, another guy that brings a lot of energy and a lot of enthusiasm to the table. Uh, kids see him as a role model, and, and he, he lives his life out in a way all those guys do that uh, would, would be the kind of person that you want your young man to grow up to be, and they set good examples for these kids. Uh, all those guys work on the defensive side. Most of them come around and help on the offensive side also. Uh, and then we got Coach Horace Bramlett, who's, uh, he and I were talking yesterday. He's been a part of about 50% of the games that, that Piedmont has played in the history of the school, either as a player, a volunteer assistant, assistant coach, student trainer, manager. Uh, he's been a part of this program for about 50% of the games that have been played here. He loves Piedmont does anything and everything that's asked of him to help out. And, uh, you know, he, he, he helps me a lot personally with a lot of the ins and outs of, of being the head coach as far as, uh, you know, handling paperwork type items and, and getting people, lining up meals when we're on the road and things that a lot of people just overlook and don't think of as being something that the, the coaching staff has to take care of. But we're a, we're a high school program. We don't have people that make travel plans for us. So he does a lot of those things. and and make sure that we have everything that we need when we go on the road and when we play at home. And can't say enough good things about Coach Bramlett and what he brings to the table to help our program out. So I think I've hit everybody there, but I'm very fortunate to have the guys that we have. That's great, Coach. Now we got a couple questions before we go. Uh, the first one is from a local guy, Coach Eddie Martin. It says, uh, do you go into a game with a certain mindset offensively, or do you take uh, what the game gives you? Well, we go in with a, a plan of what we want to do. We, uh, you know, we watch film just like every other coach in high school football does, and uh, we have an idea of what we want to do when we go in the game. But that that's always subject to change depending on what the flow of the game is. So, uh, you know, we, we we prepare and we have what we like when we go into it. But we also understand that things can change, flow of the game can change as the uh, as the game materializes, and you have to be uh, willing to adapt to to what has changed during the course of that game. And we got one more from uh, another former coach who wrote in, uh, Coach Ricky Glover. Do you get nervous before games? I really don't. I mean, I used to when I was younger, uh, but you know, I've, as I've gotten older and, and done it a little bit longer, I guess, uh, you, know, you realize that, that all you can do is prepare. You try to put your kids in the best position, give them a chance to win the game. But when it gets to Friday night, you know, I learned a long time ago that nerves keep you from enjoying what you're doing. And the games are supposed to be fun. Now, they don't always go our way. Sometimes we come up a little bit short. But I think that when you get to Friday night, you need to be loose and relaxed and, and go out on the field and, and just be confident in your abilities and what you can do. And, and you know what your team can do. If, you, if you've been involved with your team, you kind of know what they can and can't do. And uh, you know I've, I've been blessed with a lot of good coaches and a lot of good players here at Piedmont that every time we walk on the field, I think we're going to win. And, and that's a good feeling. You know, I think a lot of times the nerves come from a, uh, maybe an indecisiveness or a, a uncertainty of the opponent. Uh, but, you know, we, we expect to win every time we go out there. And so that, that kind of calms me a little bit, knowing that we're putting a good product on the field and we're going to go out there and give a great effort. Thanks, Coach. We leave you for, uh, with some highlights from our Players of the Week, which is the Piedmont Bulldog defense. Thank you very much for joining us. Go dogs. Go dogs. <laughs>